coming here, I see what the 50 years of occupation have done to my people. And um, the greatest challenge is um, helping them. There is a very big heaviness, um, distrust, and uh, when you're serving God and talking about God's love and trusting God, um, it's very hard to get that message across. The people are lovely, but they have grown up in a country that um, told you you should not try to excel, uh, that told you you were nothing, and be invisible. And that will keep you out of trouble. And that gets so deep-seated into the psyche that really affects everything. It's been 20 years and the only glimpse I see are the youth yes, that are feeling yes. the freedom. But uh, there's just such a heaviness. So my greatest challenge is I'm a person that um, sees things half full. But sometimes when I listen to the people, uh, they see everything happen. Because with my eyes I see that it's getting better, but they just can't see it. So the challenge is within this atmosphere of um, this heavy atmosphere, um, it's very hard to continue to tell them God is a God of light, a God of love. They know that, but to get it translated into daily life and to give them hope, not just sitting in church, but in their daily lives. It is easy for younger generation to be Christians in the church and it is very hard for them to stay like that and when they go home when nobody wants to say a table grace when nobody wants to say a prayer at the Christmas Eve you know, evening, right. a dinner together with the family it is a very great challenge on their shoulders so I think if we will learn how to communicate it will be better and we will be able to understand each other younger generation do not want to get rid of the traditional church or older generation style at all. They just want that there would be also something for them. And I think it's the best way how we can reach that is when generations come together and talk together and make decisions together. In that way all the generations at the same time are committed to some kind of goals that they set together instead of just right. you know few parties of the panel. Yes. Uh, I see God is the one who created family. He said at the very beginning, it's no good for a man or for a human being to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I think also that the same thing is also for a Christian. It's not a good thing when a Christian is alone. And even though we are not um, a family by blood in a church, we are family. But uh, it is very important that uh, our family members also uh, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And my dream is that in, in years to come, we find a way, way how to reach out to the middle generation, reach out to all generations and help uh, church members to get their families in. There are so many church members who come to the church and, and they say, well, my daughter don't, don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. My grandchildren, they don't want to hear anything about God. So that is something that I saw in the United States. Um, you have full families in the churches. Right. And I think that has to do with our history. That God has been taken, and church has been taken away from our country for a long time. So my dream is that we would have full families in the church. And then I would say today that my greatest joy um, is probably our young pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now burdened with the heaviness uh, of, of uh, the past. And uh, they are so passionate and full of life, and that just shows that there's such a wonderful future for our church. Absolutely. Uh, that is definitely my greatest joy. You are joyful even when you go through the struggles. Mm -hmm. So I, I cannot point out one thing. There are so many testimonies I would like to share right now, the things that have happened here. The greatest joy is each time when I see that the people's hearts are changed, when they meet the Lord, when they fell in love with Jesus Christ, and, and they want to change their lives. And, 
and, and they've seen in what kind of darkness they have lived and in what kind of happiness and peace they can get when they're with, with Jesus Christ. That's the greatest thing ever. And I don't want that none of that would stop in our church. I think all of us, it doesn't matter what kind of struggles we're going through as a church or generational uh, miscommunications or things like that. Uh, we have to remember to keep joy of Jesus Christ and what He has done for us in heart, no matter what. Um, my country will flower and pop, prosper when more of us know God. Absolutely. Um, our national anthem is a prayer. Uh, God bless Latvia, where the men sing and the women blossom. That's it. God is amazing how He brings people together from two different kind of continents and you feel like you have known them for all of your life and, 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 and you're part of their family. I just feel very blessed because you are kind of our older brother, like a shoulder that we can lean upon and, and, and share our challenges and our struggles and here we are, you say, we're going through the same things and, and that's again, if we communicate and share that can help us a lot, and already it does. Thank you. My dream for the church in Latvia is very, very closely associated with Methodism. Uh, Christianity and the, the major churches, the denominations, uh, are almost encapsulated in a time capsule. Mm -hmm. We were frozen as of 1940, and um, now God's light is shining into our all of our denominations. But Methodism has so much to offer our people. Um, those people that Oster was talking about that are disillusioned with church. Yes, right. Um, we are known for our fellowship, but the fellowship, it's not just getting together. It's getting together in God's grace and in God's love. And in, in uh, that fellowship is very special, but we also have Wesleyan theology. And it is so different from all the other denominations. There is a freedom that we can preach, and we can preach something that will reach modern people yes. today. And uh, my vision is that more and more people find God, and find their way to God, and understand that discipleship we talked about today, that I talked about. And I hope that your congregation also gets, gets blessed and, and really understands that walking with Christ.